in the field of prostate cancer over the years, the typical paradigm for detection has been to do a PSA test, and if abnormal, to start with a prostate biopsy, and if the biopsy demonstrates cancer, to treat the patient in a variety of ways. Uh, we've been heavily criticized as a field because of that, the fact that many times we find cancers that are slow growing uh, or are unlikely to cause death and we end up treating patients and having secondary side effects. We refer to that as overtreatment because we're treating people who maybe wouldn't have died of the disease had we never found it. Uh, part of what fuels the idea of overtreatment is what we call overdetection finding cancers that are probably unrelated to the PSA elevation, but that we just find them by random chance when we do a biopsy. So we've really felt that a major cause of overdetection in clinical practice is the way we do the biopsy, which is sort of a random sampling of the gland. Uh, and for the past several years, we've tried to determine whether imaging the prostate uh, through a technique called multiparametric MRI can help us to better sample in a more targeted fashion uh, and whether that can allow us to uh, do a better biopsy from several respects. Uh, we've hypothesized that much of the overdetection problem can be blamed on the way we've done biopsies and dealt with patients with elevated PSAs in general. So our approach is to use a technique of MRI called multiparametric MRI. What that implies is that the MRI is done in several sequences. The first is a traditional sequence, uh, which is anatomic and allows us to take a picture of the gland. The second and third sequence look at functional attributes of the prostate. Uh, in particular, they look at blood flow, and that's what we call dynamic contrast enhancement. They might also look at water movement, that's what we call diffusion weighted imaging. And using those sequences together will increase the accuracy of the MRI. It reduces the number of false positives that we've seen with MRI over the last 20 or 30 years.